when you're doing soil and plant monitoring, it's got to be for a purpose. The purpose for us is to, to be better farmers, to see our soil health and our plant health improving, to have beautiful soil that can grow crops with less inputs. My name is Miles Ballantyne. And I'm Julie Ballantyne. This farm is named Nimguri, where it's near Banana in central Queensland. So we have a mixed enterprise. So we background heifers through time control grazing through our pasture country, and then we grow chickpeas, wheat, and sorghum, and some mixed species cover crops, both for grazing and for cover in our country. We really focus on our biological farming to um, help us to be more regenerative and look after our soil and plant health. Monitoring is very important because you just need to know where you stand. If you're not monitoring it, you can't measure it. But we're monitoring so we just know if we're achieving their goals, which is to move away from synthetic fertilisers uh, because we were just seeing a detriment to our soils. So we've found that we wanted to move to um, get more biology into the soil along with organic matter. We like to take a shovel into the cultivation and dig and look at the colour and the, the layers in the soil, pulling up plants and looking at their roots, doing bricks tests on green leaves, and then using photos and drones to get that whole overview. I think you have to be monitoring in a cropping situation because you're going out and like putting that moisture probe down in before you plant. And so if you can incorporate some other little things when you're in the paddock anyway, then it's an easy way to get into the habit of doing some small scale monitoring. We definitely feel more empowered now that we're doing more monitoring ourselves. Um, and we've changed some of the monitoring tools that we use. And that's definitely given us more confidence to keep going with what we're doing. and and to keep trying new things. Just going out with the shovel is, is, is really great. When you dig down, just looking at the roots, how are they? Have they gone down and done a right angle? Is that because there's a compaction layer or did they just hit a stone? Are they communicating with the soil? Have they got the, the dreadlocking on the roots? If this was a sandy soil, these would be like real big dreadlocks. However, it's a high magnesium soil and most of them got pulled off. And you'll also see the layers in the soil if you're doing that as well. You might see different soil types and you can see maybe some soil treatments, what's happened in the soil. That's how you can see your fungi in the soil. And going to back to the old days of just smelling your soil. Yeah, it smells great. Is it a lovely earthy smell or is it a sour smell, which might mean waterlogging and become anaerobic. So by just by going out with the shovel and just looking and just playing in the soil, it, it goes a long way. What we've got, Gordon, is a um, penetrometer that'll show that it's got a pressure gauge on the top. With the, the penetrometer, it may not necessarily have to be one with, with the dial on it. It's just a, a rod with a, a point in and you just push it through the soil profile and you just by feel, you can feel how much the moisture is going in. It's a very simple tool. So this is not being tilled. This had cover crop and then grazed. And this has been tilled. And we'll do, we'll do three of these and then we'll do a wheel track. So we go down 300, 300. What were we just doing there with the penetrometer and what are you, what are you looking for? Okay. When, when we do the penetrometer, it's good to use the, the measurement. It gives of, of how stiff it is going down or how much pressure is needed. Um, however, it's good to do it by feel to understand how if it's actually a full profile of moisture so if we push down here and it's even it went down smoothly so therefore the moisture is full profile and not blocky if we've done a different management tool whether that's um, a biological spray you might go and see afterwards if that's helped some nutrient cycling and softened up the soil down below um, or here where we've done a little bit of a till to compare the till to no till. We often do a slake test where you just get a, a pet of soil and, and put it into a bowl or a, or a glass jar and just to see how it holds together. And it just gives a good idea that the plants are actually feeding the soil, you're getting the, the glues holding it together. 
Now this this will change from soil type to soil type because a, a sandy soil is obviously going to be a lot different from a heavy clay. But it does give a good indicator and take a photo of that and just have it on record for yourself. From a pole paddock perspective, looking at the colour of the crop is always a good indicator for us. It's not the only indicator you should be using, but we have seen a change um, from some lighter greens or some yellowing to deeper greens. Particularly um, this year in our summer cover crop, we noticed a really deep, vibrant green. And it just gives you that picture that, that things are working. Um, definitely you'll still see that leaf coloration a change and so maybe you know that there's some insect pressure. The, the basic things like heliothus in mung beans and, and sorghum, uh, just doing count numbers, um, thresholds per square metre and by looking at leaves and the coloration of it, it can show deficiencies in the plant and if, if a foliar needs to go on. A healthy plant uh, generally has good colour to it, uh, even leaves, flat leaves. If it's got you know different formations that aren't quite right, if it's curled up, could mean a, a certain thing. Uh, but just a nice open plant. The wider, the better. The generally means that it's accepting more more sunlight energy. So to, for photosynthesis, when we go out into the paddock, we it's it's easy just to look at the leaves. But also the other part of the plant is the root system, and so digging those up and actually having a look to see what is what's happening under the soil is also good. This is a young chickpea plant just out of the ground. What we're looking for is lots of nodules on these root hairs. The nodules show that it's fixing the nitrogen and nitrogen's obviously very important for it to grow and bear fruit. Nodules on more than just one and that they're going to be a nice pink colour. That's what we're looking for in the chickpeas when we dig them up. So another aspect of monitoring is looking at the weeds that are in a, a specific paddock. We did a trial where we had sprayed and then we had crimped uh, in the same paddock side by side. And just driving past and looking in the paddock, you could actually see a different type of weed growing where we had um, crimped um, to where we had sprayed. And so the weeds can tell you what's happening in terms of pressure system, whether that's moisture, whether that's um, because you've used a chemical, um, or you've got fertility issues in your soil. When we first started looking regeneratively in our crops, we got a bricks meter, and it was really exciting to see what the bricks was of all the different plants, but we use it often as a tool to see the sugars in the plants. But we've had a lot of full armyworm in our sorghum. And so the bricks helped us to make the decision that we didn't need to do anything in terms of spray wise to get rid of the full armyworm because the plant was healthy um, and could cope with that insect pressure. So I think it's, that's how bricks meters can help you um, make decisions. If we do a foliar spray, we do try and do a bricks reading um, before, that, that helps inform us that we need to do a foliar. And then after we've done the foliar, um, with, within a couple of days, we wanna see um, a, a change in the bricks. We are applying foliars anyway, um, but the, the bricks gives you a reading and it's good to see um, where, the, where the plant is at. I think it's really important if you take photos of your crops and of your pasture. At the time, it might feel like it's, it's not a good example of anything, but it helps you see your progress year on year and, and you really get a picture of what's happening in that paddock. Because even if the paddock looks disastrous, you will want to go back in a number of years and, and just compare. And we've certainly done it ourselves, looking at an old crop that was really bad at the time and going, oh wow, that's how it used to be. And nothing will give you confidence like seeing your, your crops and your pastures change. As well as visual soil and plant monitoring, we also do soil and leaf tests through labs because they give you a, a real um, in-depth picture of what's happening in your paddock.
Soil testing is not definitive because you're taking such a small sample of soil over a big, big area. So it helps build a picture over a series of years. It's not done every year. Soils take a long time to, to change. So it might be every uh, three to five years that we do it. It's good to work on a multi-layered approach. So if there's a header that can give you the yield data, you can then look at the different zones in your paddocks and test from each zone. So a, a poor part of the paddock and a good part of the paddock. Measuring depths of the soils, we like to work on zero to 10 centimetres and then 10 to 30 centimetres, just to give uh, an idea, because the zero to 10, that's where the, a lot of the nutrition is, but it's not all, always available because it, it dries out. So look at the lower depths and therefore you're looking at your roots to make sure that they're going straight down so they can actually get to those, that nutrition. One of the things that soil test has helped me with is understanding what's going on in the soil and then what's going on above the soil with the plant. It gives you a totally different picture of like soil life as like a party rather than just this dead dirt. Um, so I think that for me that was a real eye-opening moment like just to see that whole soil plant cycle. Um, and the relationships between microbes and minerals in the soil. When we first started monitoring our soils with a different perspective and we, we started growing cover crops and things, one of the, the real um, eye-openers for us was when we heard Gabe Brown say, I can get a soil test done and then I might get a plant test done and it's totally different and what's going on in the plant is a better indicator of right now for what's going to happen with that plant. And so that's why leaf tests and tissue tests, sap tests are also important because they can be wildly different. We like to do tissue tests because it gives more of a historic uh, data rather than the SAP test, which is an instant data. We use tissue tests to inform our foliar applications. So we can tailor what we're putting on, what liquids we're putting on, spraying onto the plant. They help us to know where the plant is heading and if there are going to be any problems coming up. When getting the, the tissue tests um, back from the lab, it's, it's always good to pay that bit extra and get the interpretation for it because they'll give you something to, to work off because it's um, it's an art in itself and how to how they present that to make it easy if it's on a graph or just numbers on a page and so uh, they'll often give a ideal or a low level and uh, it's, it's up to the, the landholder to work out what they want to do do they want to just ignore it and put it more on at planting time next time in the next crop or actually try and amend it as a through a foliar uh, within the crop so when we take samples, it can only really do one species at a time and it needs to be an actively growing and, and non-grazed paddock. So you pick a healthy plant, don't get one that's got any signs of disease or, or pest. So you get a true representation and then get some fully formed leaf. Because yeah, all, all the nutrients will be pumped into here, but uh, this is where the feed value is. And this is not necessarily a, you know, it might be going into stage three, but it's still not lignified. So it's still very palatable. The most important thing is to keep it consistent uh, time of day uh, every, every single time that you, you test. Uh, however, leaf testing, it should be done every, every season before flowering, when it's in a vegetative state. So you've got a chance to, to respond to it. When we're thinking about the costs of testing, I think the information that you gain certainly outweighs any cost that you would have with testing because you know what's going on with the plant. It can give you more certainty and more confidence. The information benefit year on year of your crops, it's such a bank of information for you to make good decisions. The monitoring satisfies a, a curiosity that sort of comes naturally. As farmers, we want to be farmers who care for the land and understand the land. Our personal way of doing things is not to get a recommendation and just do it we actually want to understand why we're doing it. When we can see that we do a practice and then see a result in a positive way, it really adds excitement to the way we farm and that's what drives us.